Julius McNeil. Hey, Dutch. Hope you're doing good, and I love your work, and think you uh, you are one. He's missed several words. I'm one of the best wrestling minds. I'm a big Kane fan, and I read in his book that book him in. I read him how they've written. What can I say? Yeah, you booked I know. Him in I, I Puerto Rico. It. What was it like? Yeah. And do you have any good stories with him? Yeah, I booked him in Puerto Rico. I've told this story before. I met him on some independent show in Southern Indiana, and I've never seen him before. And I was looking at him. I went, "Damn, what a big guy! What a body!" You know. And I'm thinking, "Well, he's tailor made for WWE. I mean, you could you could look at him and tell him he needed seasoning." He needed experience. <clears throat> and at the time I was going to Puerto Rico and I told him, I said, listen, uh, I'm going to Puerto Rico. Give me a call if you want to try it out in there because I can use you down there. I told him I was going to take over the boat. And he said, okay, thanks. And, uh, and I forgot. He just kept working independent shows and working a job. And so finally one day he called me down there and he says, uh, do you think you have room for me? I said, yeah. And I give him, I gave him a guarantee, which I didn't give the other guys didn't have, but they had Puerto Rico had a, a history of not paying guys. And he knew this a little bit, but I didn't amplify it any more than what he knew. Then I had him coming in, say on the 10th, but well, he calls me on like the, the second or third and told me that he was concerned <clears throat> about coming down there because he had heard some horror stories coming out of Puerto Rico and they were horror stories because some guy not get paid. Like, uh, what was Sonny's guy's name? What was Chris Candido? Yeah. Candido came down with, with her and they ended up living on the beach homeless. I'm thinking what the hell? And he had heard that. So I told him, no, come on. I'll make sure you get paid. Now, could I make sure he got paid? Well, I could maybe, put up a stink and maybe get him paid, but I couldn't really guarantee him, but I told him I could. And I was going to do it if I had to take my own money and pay him because I had promised him. So he came down, everything worked out fine. And I was glad that he was there because one night we pulled into the show and I had worked this hot angle on TV and I could tell by the people, by the way they looked at me, not at Kane, but at me, they were, Friggin' pissed at me. I forgot <laughs> what I'd done, but I'd done something evil or vile that day on TV. And they wanted to see me, you know, put in my place and, and cart it out. And that night, brother, I did this deal where I had a riot and I was trying to make it back to the ring and to the dressing room. And they cut me off. I went one way, couldn't go, the other way I couldn't go. It had like a little fence with little gates in them. And they were, just, they were all jammed. So I finally made it through with my manager, and they were beating the living shit out of us. Him too. So I remember somebody tripped me. I went down, and I got a big kick right here in my face. Bam. And boy, my eyes started swelling up, and it started bleeding. Now I'm fighting these four guys trying to – I could see the door. I said, if I could just get to the door, I'm okay. And a guy was hitting me in the ribs, not hit me in the head so much, but hit me in the ribs. Oh my God. I mean, they wasn't deadly, but they were hurting. And I remember the door opened and there stood Kane. And all the guys looked up like this. We was probably pretty close to him then. And I looked up like, thank God. And he took a step toward, toward us and they went, Whoosh! and he grabbed me by the arm and pulled me in and closed the door. If it hadn't have been for Kane, I think I, I'd have been in for a worse shot that night. That's when I went to the hospital, and Glenn went with me. Glenn went with me and my driver. We went to two hospitals that night, and I got home about 6 o'clock in the morning. I, not home, but I got back to my room about 6 o'clock in the morning. But without Glenn that night, they'd have beat the living crap out of me. So I appreciate him being there. And I've told him too, and I told him in my book. Um, <clears throat> with Kane, did, did you create a character for him to come to Puerto Rico like you did Abyss? Yeah, well, I did uh, Doomsday. Is that the I Mad Max Doomsday's... sort of thing? No, but he was like a, a monster type guy. I got some pictures of him. Doomsday, uh, and I think I just took the mask off of him. It was like a, what movie did you name them? Mad Max, Max Road Warrior. Uh, you know, that golf, that, 
the, gimp the goalie thing. mask. Oh, right. The goalie. Yeah. I took that off. And, but he learned to work. So I kept him down there nine months. And then I put him in contact with Jim Cornette. And Jim Cornette brought him into Smoky Mountain. And I think uh, Eddie Gilbert was there. He wanted to bring them together. But Eddie, something happened. He didn't go there. Actually, he came to Puerto Rico. And then, and there's a whole story about this too, but, and then Kane went on, uh, he went to the dentist part. He went to Scott Hall impersonator or whatever, yo. And then he ended up as Kane. Mm. So it worked out good for him. The Eddie Gilbert thing, it didn't work out so well because when I suggested to Carlos who could be the next booker, I told him, I didn't know. He said, well, what about Eddie? And I was going to suggest Eddie, but I didn't. And I'll tell you the reason why was because Eddie did have a drug problem and they sold uh, like Percocets and Lord tabs. They sold them. That's an opioid. They sold it over the counter. Didn't have a prescription or not. You could get it every day if you wanted it. But I told him, I said, well, I would suggest that, but I think it might be a bad idea. And he said, well, you call him? I said, no, I won't call him. You can call him, but I'm not going to call him. And so Carlos called him, give him a deal. So I lay up, Eddie came in, and three weeks later, Eddie, I get news that he had died in his hotel room. So, but could I change it? No. I mean, free, God gives us free will, and that's what he was utilizing. So, but I hate it. I really, because Eddie was a good guy. And yeah. that's in my book, too, my next new book. Book three. Book, book number three, Tres, Tres. Uh, Libra, Libro, this is my Spanish, mm -hmm. Libro Numero Tres. That's pretty good, I thought. And um, when's it coming out? When I finish it. <laughs> whenever, whenever that is. Well, have you, have you got like a schedule for it or a goal, a date in mind that you might get it out, for, maybe for Christmas? Perfect time. I hope so. I hope so. Maybe, but don't, don't you know? You know me better than most. Don't hold me to a deadline, because mm. you know I said, "Well, I don't feel good today," or this, that, and the other. I mean, I make it up, but I'm bad on deadlines. But it will be a very interesting book because in in this book, I'm going to cover my early years. Nobody knows about that. I've never been freely you know, talkative about it. This will be about my uh, TNA years, kind of. Then my WWE years and my experiences there. So it should be should be a decent book. And if you can't wait for the third book, there are two more books that Dutch has got already, Tales from a Dirt Road, and I can't remember the name of the other one. The World According to Dutch, I just looked at it. Yep. It's on the floor. I can't reach it at the moment. But uh, they're both available on Amazon, and if you want them signed... Uh, you can just email me at Dirty Dutch Fantail with two L's at gmail.com. Tell me what you're looking for, and I'll get, I'll get back and contact you right away. 